Mila Montoya Galvez spoke to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who responded to the accusations of the administration encouraging migrants to come to the U.S. Uh, that is that is false. If we take a look at migration, not just at our southern border, but in context, the level of migration throughout the hemisphere is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Do you believe a word that Secretary Mayorkas says? I'm not sure if I do. We'll find out what our guest thinks. So joining us now is the great Todd Benzman. Todd is a fellow at the Center for Immigration Studies and also the author of Overrun, How Joe Biden Unleashed the Greatest Border Crisis in U.S. History. Todd Benzman, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Your work has been absolutely indispensable when it comes to to all things immigration and border security related for a very, very long time now. So always love your work. So before we get into this very interesting and eye opening piece you wrote for the New York Post, why don't we just get your reaction to what we just heard from Secretary Mayorkas? I mean, do you believe anything he's saying there about encouraging legal migration? Well, I believe the immigrants. Uh, I've interviewed thousands of them now over the last three years all over Mexico and Central America, literally thousands. And it doesn't matter what nationality they are or what country or where they're coming from or anything. Um, they always say the same thing, that I am coming now because they're letting us in. And that's it. They're letting us in. They've never let us in like this before. Uh, we're, we sold everything we had. We begged, borrowed, stole the money that was necessary to pay smugglers. And we're going in. All our neighbors got in. All our friends got in. All our relatives got in. So I'm always going to default to the primary sources on this. And that's the ones who are making the decisions to spend the money to come. Uh, they, they, who said that they would not have come had the border not been wide open, had their odds of being let in uh, and to stay pretty much forever, forever, let's just say it, uh, that they would have stayed home. Yeah, and, and you know, your work has obviously helped to shine a bright spotlight on this. It's been a problem for Todd. I mean, Todd's been a problem for about as long as I've been following U.S. politics. I mean, during the Trump administration, I think we started to see a, a, a bit of a crackdown when it comes to fraudulent asylees here. But you know, certainly the situation right now under Secretary Mayorkas and President Biden is the worst that you or I have probably ever seen. It's probably the worst in this country's history. But, you know, you also wrote a fascinating piece for the New York Post, a little bit related. This really got a lot of attention and well-deserved attention in social media from what I saw. Your, your piece for the New York Post basically says that Biden officials are engaged in, in potentially a, a, a cover-up. They're essentially covering up an attempted terror attack committed by illegal aliens here. You know, why don't you give us some, some detail as, as to what you found? On May 3rd, two Jordanian illegal immigrants got in a big box truck, you know, one of those big, uh, they have like Amazon size uh, trucks that's unmarked though, said that they were Amazon delivery men uh, when they went to the gate of uh, Quantico, Marine Corps base, also big FBI uh, training facility there, uh, very symbolic as a, as a terror uh, target. And they were put into secondary inspection because they didn't have IDs or anything. And um, when they were in secondary inspection, they hit the gas and tried to ram through and break, bust through the, uh, the cordon there to reach the little village of Quantico uh, just inside the gates uh, where who knows what they were going to do. It sure looked, I mean, all, on its own, it's terrible enough. But one of those Jordanians crossed the border illegally, came in from Mexico. Uh, we're not sure exactly when, but not that long ago, and was waved through and rubber stamped in like everybody else. And if this was a terror attack, then that would make this the first attempted terror attack by a border crossing illegal immigrant from the Middle East, came in, accessed the target through the border. Uh, the problem is that the Biden administration has had now had almost a month to of questioning uh, what was this? Was there a terror motive? That's the big question. Was there a terror motive? Second big question is what was in the truck? Was the truck itself a weapon? What were they going to, why were they trying to, who does that? Who tries to vehicle ram their way into a heavily guarded military base, uh, if not a terrorist? Um, so 
you know, there's a blackout on information coming from the Biden administration and my column in the New York Post. You know, I'm left, we're all left to just speculate at this point, but, and to conduct analytical assessments. And my analytical assessment is that the way the administration is behaving is all but confirmation that this was a terror attack and that they know it was and that they can't deny it because they know it to be true and they don't want to be on the record in case it ever they get found out lying uh, or they know it is and they don't want to say it because Donald Trump will use that like a giant heavy sledgehammer at the very next televised debate. And so the end result is that nobody really knows for sure, but I believe it to be true. And I'll just say that. And I would invite the Washington Post and the New York Times to all come out and fact check me to death on that, please. Yeah, you know, Todd, it's a it's a wonderful invitation to the Washington Post and the New York Times. I'm not sure you're going to find many reporters, tragically, who are going to take you up on that, although they they really should. You know, I mean, just a quick word about Quantico for those who maybe are less familiar. I mean, I, I've been to Quantico, as many Americans have. I was there to see one of my law school buddies actually have his Marine Corps graduation after he finished basic training. This was like six years ago or so. It's a, it's an iconic American military facility. So it really is exactly the kind of place where you might have some some miscreants and some law breakers, people who are frankly up to no good. It, it is an obvious target for folks who are motivated by by that sort of thing. So Todd, I guess you kind of answered this question already, but I mean, nothing's going to happen here, right? If we're being realistic, I mean, the Biden administration is not going to do anything here. Are they Are they basically just hoping that people are going to forget about your story, forget about this whole conversation, the whole thing is just going to get swept under the rug? Is that basically the is that basically the legal and the political move here? I believe so. I believe that they are well aware that the regular legacy media is not interested in this story at all. Uh, they've shown no interest. Uh, there was a big White House press conference. Uh, just a few days ago, and Fox News's Ducey was the only one who asked about this. <clears throat> and you can just watch the expressions on the faces of all the other reporters, uh, the disinterest, and nobody followed up on him, on his questions. What What do you say about this Quantico base thing? And she was like, you know, that's a law enforcement matter, so we're not going to say anything about that. Well, how about if you, he said, was was this a failed terror attack? And she wouldn't say no. She wouldn't say yes. She wouldn't say anything. And nobody else followed her up on it, not followed him up on that question. Like what, since when uh, would something like this happen at Quantico and the White House press corps not express absolutely no interest except for one guy? Uh, so I do believe that they're counting on this sort of, complicity of silence on this issue. So, you know, uh, Chuck Schumer has recently resurrected his Senate border bill after it went down in flames last time they tried it here, and it's probably not gonna get a whole lot further this time. I mean, try, try to look ahead here for those of us who, who actually want a secure border, for those of us who, you know, heaven forbid, actually desire to see a country where Jordanians, Middle Easterners, are not you know, basically willing to get to the gates of Quantico and, and attempt a terrorist attack. Do we have any hope for the rest of this year, Todd, or is, is is our only hope really that 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 Trump prevails and then starts changing some policies come January 2025? I don't know. Everybody always accuses me of depressing them uh, on that question, and um, you know I can't deny it. But I kind of am with the latter. I think that nothing is going to change here at all until after November, uh, and that goes for the Biden administration too. The administration is got Mexico doing its dirty work down there to slow some of the flow uh, so that it doesn't look as bad, uh, at least in Texas. They've got the numbers like from 14,000 a day to, you know, 7,000 a day, which seems to be under the threshold of media interest. Uh, I think the only way that any of this is going to change is if there's a new occupant of the White House, uh, because you know, this administration has really made a, a decision that they are not going to follow any immigration law, nor are they going to use any of the readily available executive authorities that Donald Trump used to shut the whole thing down. 
like a, you know, overnight, they opened up the spigot. They, they made it so that probably close to a hundred percent of everybody who reaches the Southern border is allowed in and to stay in for, for years, if not forever. Um, that's simply unprecedented that you have that much of a guarantee of entering and staying in this country. I mean, Mayorkas himself recently said, yeah, about 85% of everybody who reaches the border, more than, he said, more than 85% of everybody who reaches the border now, uh, you know, we're, we're stamping them in. That's unprecedented. I mean, if I had those odds at, at the table games in Vegas, man, I'd have my own tent <laughs> set up out there uh, looking, you know, and I would waiting for my turn to get a, get at one of those card games. Yeah, you and me both, brother. But look, uh, Todd, fantastic work, as always. You really are one of the indispensable journalists and researchers and investigative reporters out there when it comes to this issue. Thank you for this article in The Post, and thank you so much for joining us.